Hello and welcome, I'm MT Speed Kills. Welcome to my very first video. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this bunker landscape diorama. So uh, grab a drink, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So yeah, we start off with the base, which is just a piece of styrofoam. And currently I'm writing down and drawing out where I plan on putting things and thinking about putting elements that may or may not show up in the final build. But either way, this is just a, a, a simple little rubric, a simple little plan that I'm following. So that way when I go to fill in for the height and the elevation changes, I know where to place stuff and where I don't want to place stuff. Again, this is just a simple little thing to follow. It doesn't mean it's set in stone. I end up changing the upper right and the bottom right hand corners a couple times throughout the whole build process. So now I'm filling in the voids that are going to be covered up in the future. These are just some offcuts of that same styrofoam that are now I'm using some Eileen's tacky glue just to glue it all down. You can use any kind of PVA glue you want, Elmer's. I mean, it all it all works for this. Again, we're just trying to fill in these voids, <clears throat> which we're then going to put ground cover over the top. So after having glued all this down, now I'm going to have to end up building the interior portion of this bunker because I'm going to have the doors open so you're going to be able to look inside of this. I have to do this now just because this is the only time in the building process which I could put this in. I lost some of the footage of me building this hallway, but this is just built out of foam core. It's also been painted up with some simple acrylics and some Tamiya paint with a little bit of weathering. Again, I have to do this now because there's not going to be another time for me to, to get in here and do this again. So now I'm making the exterior retaining walls for the bunker, which is made from a one inch thick XPS foam. I've just cut it into three equal-ish size pieces. And after this, I, I created a border around the entire base that was made out of balsa wood that would then frame the landscape. So now we're gonna move on to creating the ground texture, which is actually one of the more fun and messier sides of this hobby. This is a uh, homemade version of Sculptal Mold I found online that uses uh, blown insulation for attics and plaster of Paris with just water. And then you just combine to mix. And then once it's mixed, you've got to work, you have a working time of like 15 to 20 minutes. So because of that working time, you definitely want to work in either small batches or just small little sections and just plan it out. So yeah, with it all mixed up, now let's start applying it to the base. Just, just keep pressing it in. You can also score some of the styrofoam if you're afraid of it not sticking, but I've never really had that big of an issue with it. Again, just apply it all over wherever you want ground texture. You can add as much or as little as you want. So the goal with this is just to build up the landscape. Here I'm building a pond, so really more of the depression for the pond, where it's going to be. And then eventually I'm going to start shaping in where the, the, the paths are going to be. And just, again, you're creating some interesting looking undulations because it just looks more natural that way. <clears throat> now I'm going to also add in plaster rocks that are going to be coming through the ground. So the best way to do that is to embed, embed it into the sculptal mold while it's all wet. That way it bonds really strong and it blends together really pretty pretty naturally. So once you've applied all the all the sculptal mold and got it to where you want it, now you can like wet your finger and smooth areas out or leave areas rough. Depends on what you're looking for. But now we have to let it dry or at least dry enough that we can go on to the next, the next step which is applying the dirt texture which is literally just sifted backyard dirt. Well, technically it's 90% dirt. It also has some gray uh, tile grout that I had laying around just to help lighten the color up a little bit for projects that don't involve painting and also provides a little extra uh, cohesion and bonding when, when I wet this down with watered down Mod Podge. So I forgot to record how I actually applied the glue. So what you do is you, you take this mixture of Mod Podge and water or just straight Mod Podge and slather it on the board. And then you take a stocking, put it over a cup full of dirt mixture, and then I just sift it on. I also place little stones that I found in the backyard as well. Once the dirt is dry, we're gonna now move on to doing the grass. You could totally get away with using flocking for this um, and ground foams, um, but personally I like the way static grass looks, so we're gonna go with static grass. 
So the first step is applying Mod Podge in small sections, then applying the grass. That way we don't have to worry about drying too quickly. So currently I'm using two millimeter Woodland Scenics medium green grass, but we're gonna eventually go all the way up to 12 millimeter. And we are applying it using a static grass applicator. You know, you just, you fill up the, the, the tub, you turn it upside down and you shake it onto the wet Mod Podge. Once you're happy with the coverage, you can then take a vacuum with a stocking over it and then cleaning it up by uh, sucking it up and then saving it because this stuff is still perfectly usable again. So here's a close up of what it looks like after we're done with this, with this part. Um, unfortunately, I lost a lot of footage that comes up after this because the static grass applicator was causing my camera to glitch out. So once the grass dried, I did something. I did something that I didn't think I wanted to do, but we did it anyways. Uh, we ended up priming the whole thing black. So here you go. So yeah, there it is. No, that's not a charcoal briquette. We are currently in the part of a project that makes you feel like, oh no, what have I done? But this is where you gotta have trust in the process. On a side note, ignore old me's waving my hands. He had no clue what he was going to say at this time. So yeah, I primed this because I plan on airbrushing it all, but you totally could just use the natural static grass color and the natural dirt colors. So after painting it black, I went over with a Zenithal highlight, which ended up being worthless, but I did it anyways, because I never tried it. After doing a Zenithal highlight, I went in and started painting the grass. I wanted to try a technique that I learned from Night Shift and started with the highlights of the grass first, which is this brown khaki color. After painting all the highlights on the grass, I went and changed out to a NATO green from Tamiya and painted at the base of all, the, all of the, uh, the grass just to get that nice deeper color back. This is where luckily that black really does come and help if I missed any spots because it really makes it look more depth. It gives the grass a lot more depth. And this is where the bulk of that time comes in. Yeah, it's, it takes a long time to paint all this grass, but it really gives you a lot more control over color modulation. You can get the colors that you desire and you're not just stuck to whatever Woodland Scenics has. But again, it takes a lot of time. After applying all that NATO green, I added a little bit more of um, yellow green from Tamiya as well to get that more natural gradient between the base color, that NATO green, all the way up to that beige khaki of the highlight. So again, went back over it and just blended it all in. At this point, I was wondering whether or not the white Zenithal was actually doing anything for me, and it was actually quite distracting me, so I went and grabbed and changed to a brown color to paint over the dirt, just to see how it would how it would look. And fortunately, I liked what I saw, so I continued going on, and this is a, uh, this is, this is to me a flat earth, um, pretty good base color for, for just dirt. So once I got full coverage, I then added buff to the brown mixture just so I can then do the highlights on the paths or the to make the paths look a little bit more well-worn and more dry. You also could use chalk pastels to get this kind of effect, but you know, personally, since I already have the airbrush out, I, I enjoy the way this looks. And then in the future, I will go over this with a new product that I wanted to try out. So the flat earth in buff mixture isn't only just for the well-worn, well-driven, well-walked areas. It's for the, for, the, for the parts that are also more exposed to the sun, that are a little bit drier. I was kind of thinking of like a late spring, early summer, summerish kind of time for this diorama. So there's still lots of greens left, but it's also a little bit drier. So next up, we're gonna end up painting the rocks, the big boulders that are still coming out of the ground, which in hindsight, I should have painted before doing all the groundwork, but I wanted to try something a little bit new, a little bit different. Unfortunately, I lost footage of me painting the rocks, so I only have bits and pieces here and there, but I did a base coat with a, with a gray, and then I did a couple washes with some different color grays and some browns. Once the washes were dry, I went back with a lighter colored gray and almost a white for a, a dry brushing highlight. So here's a little bit of a close-up and uh, I think they came out pretty good despite painting them after painting all the grass. Again, I would have painted them first, but again, they came out pretty good.
After painting the rocks, I uh, wanted to go back and try something new on the, the roads. I got some AK Interactive enamels and I wanted to see if I can get some more depth in the, in the ground. So I used an earthy and a dry dusty tone to help further accentuate the, 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 the track marks and the dry marks on the, on the dirt roads. Um, these are enamel paints, so I used mineral spirits to help blend in while they were still wet. So I went over all the bits that I airbrushed earlier. And I think it came out pretty well. Once again, I lost some footage, but I just painted the, uh, the bunker and I weathered it with the same uh, enamel paints that I used on the dirt just to blend it all together. I also added some fine leaf foliage on for the bushes and that tree. So the next step is going to be painting the little stones that are along the pathway. It, they're all there, but they kind of blend together after they've been airbrushed. So I, I went back and I painted them the same colors as I did the plaster rocks. This really helps them to pop and stand out and just gives you some gives your eye something to catch on to. I then even lost more footage of me scratch building these bunker doors, this little the little breeblies, all the little things you see. But I built them, placed them in there, and I also poured the resin, which you see in the in the pond. These little radiation signs were also built along with the other stuff, but again, that's lost. Um, luckily, I still have the footage of me placing it. So I just used the nail to push through the top so I could then uh, use PVA glue and glue this, each sign in place. After finishing gluing the uh, signs in, then I just glue the tree in. Uh, all the other fine leaf foliage is glued down the same way. After finishing up that, I went on and painted the base black. It, For me, t painting the base black really just ties everything together. It finishes it off in a nice, neat way, and it just really frames the, the diorama perfectly. So yeah, there it is. This build's done, and my first ever video is almost done. Thank you so much for watching. Now, it might be a little cheeky, but if you made it this far in the video, please comment with the word banana and a question, if you have any and I'll respond to you first. But in all seriousness, I hope to do a lot more of these in the future. I already got a new phone and I want to try using that, that camera instead of the camera that I use currently. I'm currently working on a new build and I hope to have that out by the end of the month, but we'll see. See you in the next one.